I've been using the new Bing on the Microsoft Edge browser for a week and I'm very impressed. So in this video, I want to show you what it can do. Nobody's really used Bing so much before, but now things are looking different. Microsoft recently announced a new Bing with AI. They call it not just a search engine, but a research assistant, personal planner, and a creative partner at your side whenever you search the web. You might think, oh, it's just a web browser plus ChatGPT, but it's a little different and uh, perhaps even more powerful in the way that the new Bing is faster and more accurate because it can update itself with the latest news and information from the internet, whereas ChatGPT knows only what happened before 2021. But still, it does make some mistakes and uh, generate false information. But I'll get into that later. Incidentally, Microsoft Edge might become one of the hottest apps of this year because it works best with the new Bing since they are both from Microsoft. Anyway, let's have a look at the new Bing and Edge browser. I like the new design of Bing. I can't quite remember what it looked like before because I hadn't used it for a long time. But now it says, ask me anything on the search bar in order to encourage you to write your search query as if you're talking to an actual person. When you perform a query, you will see this standard search results screen, just like in Google. But the major difference is that it also automatically generates a response from AI on the right column. But this only happens occasionally, and you can tweak how often you want to see the AI response alongside the search results. So if you don't see it, you can access it from this chat tab, or you can simply scroll up to start a conversation. What's amazing is that the new AI can now go through the search result and web pages and then generate a response for you. And this is what I love the most. The response comes with references, so you know exactly where its answer came from. With ChatGPT, it was different because you couldn't see the references, so it was hard to check whether what it says is correct or not. But with Bing, it's a little easier. Also, the fact that it can see the latest information from the internet means it knows what happened after 2021, unlike ChatGPT, which was one of its weaknesses. So you can even ask about the Qatar World Cup or this year's Super Bowl. By the way, it understands many languages too. I tried with Japanese and uh, it did a pretty good job. Although it might not be as proficient as the major languages like English, Spanish, and uh, French. And also it made some mistakes when I was asking about the best spas in Tokyo. So if you ask in other languages than English, it might be more likely to make mistakes and generate false information. Anyway, this for chat view is only available for Microsoft Edge, so you can use Bing in other browsers, but its functions are limited. I guess that's a good segue into Microsoft Edge browser. To be honest, I'd never really used Microsoft Edge that much before, so I was a little hesitant to try it, especially I've been loving using Arc browser from the browser company. But it's actually great. My most favorite thing is the sidebar. If you used Vivaldi browser or Arc browser, you probably know how useful a sidebar can be. You can register your favorite websites there and open them anytime. For me, I have my favorite task and no tabs, so I can always write down things or find information. Or you can open Spotify and listen to your favorite music while you work. Also, since this is from Microsoft, access to Microsoft Office apps is super fast and easy. I don't really use them that much, but if you do, this is very useful. And then you have a range of utility tools like a calculator, unit converter, and world clock. Oh, by the way, another huge thing for me was that it now lets you install extensions from the Chrome Web Store. So if you use lots of Chrome extensions, you can keep using them on Microsoft Edge. This was very important for me because there are lots of extensions that I cannot survive without. Speaking of Chrome extensions, one of my favorites is Scribe, who is currently sponsoring this video. I like it because it feels like magic and uh, saves me tons of time. If your work involves onboarding, making training materials, and company knowledge base, or simply answering questions, you definitely want to check it out. I already need to create a how-to guide or step-by-step -step tutorials for my work, which can be time-consuming, but Scribe makes the process 100 times easier and faster. You just need to press this record button and do the process on your own. So let's say I want to create a how-to guide on signing up for the new Bing waitlist. You search for new Bing in your browser and then find the new Bing page and then click on join the waitlist button. Then you just need to log into your Microsoft account or create one if you don't have one yet. All right, 
and when it's finished stop the recording and then scribe will automatically generate a step-by-step -step guide based on the recording you can just share it as it is but you can make some changes to make it easier to digest and the best part is it's free for personal use if you're curious you can check it out from the link in the description so you can install it and start using it right away cool Let's get back to the sidebar. Uh, this is the best part. These two at the top are the most useful ones. Why is search? So whatever web page you're on, you can quickly search something from the sidebar without moving from the current page. If you need to know something while you are writing, for example, it's really convenient. And then, of course, there's this giant blue Bing icon at the top, which opens a chat menu where you can talk to the AI. This is where it truly feels like you have a real assistant by your side. Of course, you can ask any questions. Um, if it's just a simple question, using normal search would suffice. But if it's a complex or weirdly specific question like the one shown here, what are some meals I can make for my picky toddler who only eats orange colored food? It can give you a pretty good detailed answer based on what it finds on the internet. And if you want to dig deeper into something, you just need to ask it. Also, if you're in need of a, a brainstorming partner, you can ask it to give you some ideas. It can be for your blog or YouTube channel, or you know, it can be for your business projects or personal stuff, like how to throw a great dinner party. Whatever it is, it can be a huge help. But another thing I like is that it can recognize what you're seeing on the main panel, which is, you know, of course, only if you give it permission. For instance, if you're reading a long article, you can ask the AI to summarize it for you which might take a few seconds. Then you can even ask some follow-up questions if you want to know more. Or this one is crazy useful. Let's say you're writing a blog post and want a little help to make it better. Now you can ask the AI to read it and make some suggestions for you. Of course, not everything it says is useful, but some actually are. You can highlight a specific paragraph or sentence and ask it to revise, expand, or correct them. This is super useful when you are feeling stuck or if you want to check your grammar or spelling. Personally, this might be the most exciting feature of all because it really feels like you have a real assistant helping you out and you can use it on any website you want or any web app. So if you have a favorite note app or writing app with a web app, you can easily get the help of AI for it. But when it comes to writing, you can switch to the compose tab where you can tweak how you want it to write for you, such as the tone, format and length so if you are replying to an email you could give it a brief summary what you want to say and hit the generate draft button in just a few seconds it can give you a nicely written email that you can copy and paste finally this insight tab is kind of useful too it shows a list of relevant articles and uh, website based on what you're seeing on the main panel. I guess if you're doing some kind of research, this is a great way to discover more about that topic or subject. There are a few other cool features too. Collections is one of them. It's like Pinterest, where you can create multiple boards for different topics and uh, projects. You can curate pictures and articles easily here. Also, web capture can be handy when you want to save the screenshot of the current page. You can draw on it if you want to and then save it or share it. So Microsoft Edge isn't actually bad at all. In fact, it's pretty good and even amazing now with a new Bing. Still, it has flaws too, since there are many reports of Bing producing false information or completely made up information. So you still have to use it with caution. Even then, I'm sure lots of people will start using it more and Bing takes some shares from Google, saying Bard, which is Google's version of ChatGPT, isn't doing so well at the moment but I'm sure they'll catch up. And when they do, it's going to be interesting to see how Google's products like Chrome, Google Sheets, Google Docs, and Gmail are going to look like with AI. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out Scribe. And if you're curious to find more great Chrome extensions, check out this video. Cool, thank you so much for watching and uh, see you in the next video. Bye.